What is up, dudes? Lady dudes, welcome back to Just Nuts. Let me start out with a nice ASMR-ish sip of water. <sighs> oh, yeah, that's nice. That's really nice, guys. Welcome back <laughs> to Just Nuts. Today, we are doing our top five. Well, technically, it's top, well, actually, it's top six. I couldn't really cut down to five. There were too many I, want, I liked, and there was just one extra. But we have our top six... Uh, level three monsters with huge potential for the future of just being good in in some way, being be used in some deck, somewhere, sometime, and uh, yeah. So, uh, if you like the first and second um, parts of this series, definitely, definitely keep stay tuned for this because I'm gonna do level four after this, and then depending if I still feel like it, maybe we'll go all the way to level twelve. Who knows? Um, but um, you know, I'll, I'll decide as we go after level four. But for here today, let's get started. I don't want to waste too much time. We'll start with Doom Dog Octhros, our number six slot. He is a level three Dark Fiend with 800, 800 for its stats, um, with an effect that says this: If he is sent from the field to the graveyard, add one level eight Fiend monster from your deck to your hand. This is a mandatory effect, so keep that in mind. But um, Realistically, before Grinder Golem got banned, Grinder Golem was really the only worthwhile target. There's still a couple spicy things. I mean, you're looking at like Gores, the Emissary of Darkness, and I feel like there's one more that I can't remember off the top of my head, but it has to be a level 8 Fiend. It's a little specific, but it, I feel like it's really not that specific. We have a decent amount of level 8 Fiends when you look at it. Um, fiend is like, like after Warrior, like the, the second most common printed type in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! So, I mean, you know, I'm not, I would not be surprised if we see a, a, a decent amount of level 8 fiends in the future. And all it takes is one. I mean, Grinder Golem should be banned. Absolutely. 100%. Card was too good with Doom Dog Octhros. I was abusing it in Lair of Darkness, where I could Ties of the Brethren out Doom Dog with, um, you know, either Lilith or Sangan or um, Skarm, and then just pop off from there. And Because I'm going to just search a, uh, I can tribute him, search a, um, a grinder golem and then tribute sand gang get a hand trap and then i'm just kind of set up so um definitely keep an eye out for this card because all it takes is one dark fiend that's that good because this card can also be linked away um with uh blah, 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 salamangrid almirage as well so it, as your normal something can just search you the level eight monster if it's that important so keep an eye on that Next up, we have another insect monster. I know you may be like, John, what the heck is up with all these insect monsters? Well, like, I'm sitting here like, what the heck, Konami? Why are you getting us random good insect support as of late? Koki Pulse is just generically good for insects. I, I believe that at some point, if we get any insect deck that uses level fours, Goki Pole will be a huge part of that um, because he says he has a nice effect. Uh, he's a level er, a level three earth insect with 1,000 attack, 1,200 defense. So he is Salaman Great Almirageable. <laughs> and his effect says this. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one level four insect monster from your deck to your hand. Then, if you added a normal monster, you can special summon it. Then you can draw, or I'm sorry, then you can destroy one monster on the field with attack greater than or equal to that of the special summoned monsters. This is a very, very good effect. Um, it's really, really good. I like. I cannot say it enough. This is either if you want to play the normal monsters, this is either just going to be a straight up like link this off special one from deck, or you can even search something like um, Aztecapete, the card that uh, the insect monster that banishes any insect from grade to special it from hand. So it's you banish the Goki Pole, you get another insect on board. Super, super easy. Um, like, I don't know, I, I just think, like, this card will be so good at some point. You can just, even if you just use it as link material for one of the bigger insect link monsters, I know we have that link two on the horizon, we don't know where we're getting it, but we'll get it at some point. The link three, the Papillon one, coming in Chaos Impact, which is a nice boost for insect decks. Like, just use him as one of the materials for that, and you just get a free extra monster on board, and you're swarming, I mean, pun intended. Um... I just think it's really good, and the special from deck is just a bonus if, if your deck allows you to play those normal monsters like that without too much drawback. But um, definitely keep them in your head because all it takes is a couple more insect cards or one insect archetype that's truly that good, and um, Goki Pole will be in the running. I mean, Foolish Burial makes this card literally a rota. So, or this card makes Foolish Burial a rota, I mean. So keep an eye on Goki Pole. 
Next up, we have our number four slot, Lilith, Lady of Lament. And I know what you're thinking. You may see this card, you're like, this card already gets abused. What are you talking about? We've seen this card be played in Paleos, lists that have topped, you know, YCSs and, and regionals and whatnot. We've seen this card in Mystic Mind Burn, which has topped regionals and um, YCSs. But I think the biggest thing is that just keep an eye because as long as we keep getting more normal trap cards, we just got to get out, which gives this card another large ceiling. Just the fact that you, you trade this in for a card that's just going to give you a two for one, which is a really strong disruption slash removal effect. And like just the fact that your normal summon can be that, like can just be so versatile. All we need is more tra uh, normal traps in any deck that plays a, a hefty amount of just powerful normal traps or a normal trap that you'd like to get to this card is powerful as well so just keep an eye on her i just think even though she has been abused and she isn't necessarily slept on i think she still has her potential is like uncountable um it's just one of those things i mean trap cards are always the thing with trap cards is they're slower than spell cards so to make up for that konami generally makes trap cards higher ceiling higher power um like there's no spell cards that just say spin two extra deck monsters your opponent controls like that's only going to exist on a trap card right um so that's why lilith has so much potential any slower deck she can just be so strong even if she's your normal summon you don't get any monsters on field there's a good chance with the amount of stun you'd have after using her that your opponent won't have anything left on field to like attack, deal you any damage anyway so don't sleep on lilith she's incredibly good incredibly good trust me and even in lair uh, even better then we move to number three. I've got Predaplant Orphis Scorpio. This is a card that was abused probably about, what, a little over a year ago um, when we were still seeing 60 card decks with um, that grass looks greener being used um, in them with, like, Light Sworn Zombies and, like, Dinosaurs Engines being abused in it. Um, but this card is mainly being abused for, what, the Gem Knight Fusion card. Um, I can't remember. Is that what it's called? No, that's not what it's called. But whatever orpha scorpio gets you to your darlington cobra and darlington cobra will uh search you any fusion card from your deck to your hand and that's mainly what i want to highlight here is that this card as your normal summon uh and then sending one um monster from your hand to the grave which isn't even bad that's a send it's not even a discard so that could even trigger certain effects um there's so many cards that like being discarded nowadays you get uh, two monsters on board, and you'll get a free fusion spell. And you know how much we've seen how much Konami has been all about giving decks their own fusion card. So many lately. I mean, seriously. We're looking at Prank Kids. We see that Dragon Maids now is their own fusion card. Like, so many of these archetypes are just, just get a, a fusion card. Why not? Um, and it's just so good. I mean, seriously. Um, so I just think with that, like any deck can abuse this. It's just a link at the cost of two cards in hand. You get a link to with a fusion spell. It's a plus one, but a good, a strong plus one um, in that. And I just don't think it should be slept on because I think in the right deck, this could easily be a blowout card. I just, if you go first and you draw this, you might just win, you know, so. Don't sleep on Orphus Scorpio. I just think the potential is there immensely. And in, also just in plant decks that you could search an extra normal summon while you're um, uh, putting two plants on board to make Aroma Seraphy Jasmine and to extend. So even for the plant decks, the, the potential is there as well. So we'll move to our number two slot. Lone Fire Blossom, another plant support card, even though Orpha Scorpio is, can be generic support for any archetype that's fusion based. Lone Fire Blossom is just a plant specific de uh, card. It's insane though. When you read this card, you're literally like, wow. They really, they really were ambitious when they made this card. Lone Fire Blossom says, once per turn, you contribute one face of plant monster that can be itself to special summon any plant monster straight from the deck. Um, insanely powerful effect uh, it's not once per turn so you can literally lone fire into lone fire lone fire into lone fire and then the third lone fire go into the monster you actually want to get off of it and doing that just thins your deck three more uh, two well two extra slots um you know which doesn't seem like much but in the grand scheme of things in a grindier match where you end up top decking if lone fire is not a particularly good top deck you might as well clear them out of your deck right so that's something that gets slept on here but just in general, just being able to tutor into any plant monster in your entire deck is such a huge card. Obviously, this card's weaknesses are that it's extremely weak to hand traps and called by the grave. That you literally, 
This card loses to Ash. This card loses to Valor and Impermanence. And it also loses to Call by the Grave, like we said. So, um, Ash is the worst. Ash and Call by the Grave are the worst ones because it would clear itself off the field, and then you don't even get the special summon. At least with Called by the, or at least with Valor and Impermanence, they have to hit you on normal summon or special summon, so that you don't get a chance to activate your effect. And at least you stay up on the field, so you do you can link this off into a Jasmine or something like that. But still, it, it's still a really powerful card. I mean, nonetheless, uh, hand traps aren't even that crazy. I mean, you look at Thunder Dragon and Pendulum being the two best decks right now, neither of those decks even really pay, play hand traps, like, at all. So Lone Fire definitely has, you know, some wiggle room there. So definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, same thing as, like, Goki Pole. Any plant archetype that comes up or any just generic plant support could make this card relevant. Again, we've seen plant FTKs and, and all that stuff, so just don't sleep on it. That's the whole point of this video. Don't sleep on it and then number one here for level threes that i think have huge potential we have the agent of creation venus this card is insane uh, it's literally just a plus three i mean like you just put you just you have a free saryuja off this card you have a free Borload, a free link four whatever it is you just have for free off of this card it's insane if you don't know what this card does it says you can pay 500 life points as cost to special summon a mystic shine ball straight from the hand or deck uh, and that's not once per turn. So if you play three mystical shine balls in your deck, you just go normal summon, boom, shine ball, boom, shine ball, boom, shine ball, and then you have a link four off of your normal summon. That's insane value for a normal summon. I think we we see we saw very briefly when World Chalice was still a, considered a playable deck, and it it won YCS uh, Bokum, I think is what is the what it was called like at the beginning of 2018. Um, or was it the end of 2017? I can't remember. It was around there, um, that competitive season. Um, this was like the, the like the set, not the centerpiece, but like if you saw this card, it was like, oh, I'm going. As long as they don't have a hand trap, like I'm going. And if they bait, if they use it on this, I probably have extenders to like make other plays elsewhere. But it's so insane as a card. It's just too powerful, seriously. And I get it. Definitely the argument against it is you have to play three Venus, but you also have to play three Shine Balls. If you draw a Shine Ball, a three of in your deck, without seeing Venus, it could be pretty rough. World Chalice does have ways to make good use of it. I mean, their Link their link 1 takes any normal monster, so you can just normal a Shine Ball, link it off. That thing allows you to special summon from your hand, uh, you know, to start getting stuff out of your hand and stuff. But, um, I don't know, I just think overall... The, the, it's like it's like high risk, high reward. I think I think there is a, a, a fairly high risk playing three complete garnets in your deck, um, you know, and risking drawing those. But the, the the reward of just drawing a Venus so high, even if you draw Venus with the Mystical Shine Ball, special summon from hand or deck. Obviously, it it's better for you to special from deck, but from hand, still pretty good, right? You're still just spamming the field, putting up big link monsters, putting up a, an insane board, and giving your opponent lots of fits. So do not sleep on the Agent of Creation, Venus. And I think that pretty much sums us up here. That's our number one, guys. So don't sleep on any of these six cards. The Agent of Creation, Venus, Lone Fire Blossom, Predoplant Orphus Scorpio, Lilith Lady of Lament, Goki Pole, and also Dune Dog Octhros. Um, that's pretty much it for the video. Definitely stay tuned for the top four or top five. Maybe I might not have to do top ten because there's so many level fours. Level four is like the most common um, level that they've made. So I might have to do top ten for them, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, I haven't really skimmed down the list yet. And uh, so stay tuned for that, though, if you've been, been enjoying the series so far. And um, let me know if you think I missed anything. As always, I'm always open to suggestions. If there's anything in particular you think I missed on this list, level threes that are ha have huge potential for the future, definitely throw them at me. I'm definitely curious to see what you guys think. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, go and subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this in the future. I love doing the top ten, top five videos. They're really fun to do. They're really fun to do the research for and read up on cards I didn't know about before and just learn more and then talk about them so that's pretty much it i love you thanks for watching peace